I came to the healing rooms um, because I'm in rehab and I was desperate for anything and I was pretty much gonna kill myself and I just asked God. I, I just came with no expectations. I came for anything. I needed something big or else I was gonna kill myself. Um, well, I'm just gonna read off this for now. This is my notes I've been trying to define for the last month to come here because there's been so many things that have happened that I really just put the big things down. I mean, the list could go on and on and I couldn't finish, so I finally got the 10 biggest things, the main, you know, so this is it. <laughs> All right, so just read? Please. Okay. So, I came to these healing rooms just 50 days ago. I'm from LA and have seen and lived horrors of all kinds. I got here completely desperate and broken with a definite plan that if I failed again, I was relieved to know with everything in me that I was completely at ease killing myself in my storage unit back in LA. Suicide was the only relief I had left. I had no expectations of God. I just needed to know he wanted me to go on living and I needed to desperately breathe inside. So the healing room, the healing that has happened. One, before the prayer rooms, the pastor said, there is someone here that has been in a dark, dark place. The Lord is telling me now to hold on, that the healing has already begun. I knew he was speaking to me. Two, I hadn't slept in weeks, and when I did, I was consumed with horrific night terrors. But that night, I finally slept four hours straight with no nightmares. Three, I walked out with a sense of peace I've never known. I immediately felt lighter when I inhaled and exhaled. I could breathe inside for the first time. Four, my PTSD was so unbearable, I actually started having seizures triggered by flashbacks of past trauma. I haven't had one since, since and God has given me enough relief to finally begin working on my buried past. Five, I pray deliverance from bondage of past soul ties. I no longer feel chained to unhealthy people, my past abusers, my street family in the hood, or anyone. Six, the judge in L.A. didn't send me to prison. He told me just four days after these healing rooms that he could see something different in me. He told me to stay in Captive Hearts Rehab. Seven, I went back to the doctor to recheck my heart. He was puzzled and told me, <laughs> he was puzzled and told me with shock on his face that my two damaged heart valves and murmur were gone. He, how could this be, he repeated. I don't understand. I just smiled. I went to the healing rooms last week, I said. It's God, man. <laughs> he checked me three times. <laughs> Eight. A girl came into the rehab, and the first night she asked if I wanted to leave with her and get high on heroin. And it hit me that God had removed the obsession to get loaded. She left the next day, but I was able to pray with her. Nine. I want to be a... Sh I want to be... I'm sorry. <laughs> so, so many. Okay. I want to be a street minister and youth advocate to homeless kids runaways and abused kids, but also to help those trapped in gang life. 10. I got diagnosed with HIV in 2007, but after the healing rooms, I had accepted to use even my worst challenges for his will and to give hope. I finally gave in to get new labs to check the levels of my T-cells and viral count. To my shock and those around me, I am now completely negative. My conclusion? God is a show-off and my best friend. He literally tickles me when I'm sad. The end. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain.